edition of Chapter Chats. I'm Dakota. I'm Carrie. And this is our chance to have a book club with you guys. So, welcome. <laughs> Next month, we assure you that it will be live and you'll be able to interact with us. But for this first one, it's going to be a pre recorded edition. Just to give you guys an idea of what we uh, want to do with this space and this time. And then at the end, we'll give you all the details for when to tune in next time. All right, let's get started. So we have chosen to talk about Bill Bryson today because he's got a ton of books. Absolutely. And last year, he decided to announce his retirement from books, although we know how authors can work. <laughs> and we'll see if he actually sticks to his retirement announcement. Yes. So... I chose to read um, one of his scientific books, which is The Body. And I chose to read Bill Bryson's um, In a Sunburned Country and also one of his more famous ones, A Walk in the Woods. Yes. So he has a couple of books that are scientific and sort of more historical rather than travel are sort of related. So I, I kind of stuck to that side of things. Um, they're very anecdotal. Like it's a lot of um, factual breakdown, but for every man instead of like, it doesn't get real specific, although there are a lot of names. So if you like that, then you would probably like this kind of book. Um, if you want more accuracy and more of a deep dive for science or history, Maybe not for you, um, but this one was super cool. I thought because like you did learn things about like I don't know every single organ in your body and your your body systems and how they work and even certain diseases. Um, it had cool facts like the term lily livered uh, is because people used to think that the liver was the seat of courage in the body, and so if you didn't have any, you were lily livered, which. I like anecdotal things like that, so I thought that was interesting. Um, if you read it in small doses, uh, it was enjoyable. So more dense, scientific stuff um, compared to some of his other works, did you find yourself laughing I, at all? I did. Um, his humor uh, was all throughout the books, and sometimes you know, you're just going along like, that's interesting, that's, that's interesting, and then you would laugh, which mm -hmm. I like. That sounds very different compared to these two um, books, which are actually um, travel, and I think this one is listed as humor, um, which is definitely how I would summarize Bill's writing, more witty humor. Um, so this first one, A Walk in the Woods, him and his friend Stephen Katz decide that they are going to hike the Appalachian Trail. That is an undertaking. It's definitely, it is over 2,000 miles, um, and I don't think either you or I have ever <laughs> thought or considered about hiking 2,000 miles uh, through no. the Appalachian Mountains. Um, I think it was more, we find out, spoiler alert, than they could handle as well. <laughs> um, but it's, he does throw in his typical witty humor, but he also combines it a lot with some scientific facts and knowledge. He talks a lot about um, federal land management because he does pass through Harper's Ferry, Shenandoah National Park, the Smokies, which are all federally owned lands. Um, so he throws in a lot of that too, but likes to keep it lighthearted. Um, but it, it kind of reminds me of just two grumpy old men at times <laughs> hiking um, together, which is a bit humorous. Um, though it's rated for travel, I would also classify it as more humorous. And then um, in a sunburned country, if you're ever thinking about going to Australia or have yeah. been to Australia, he talks about um, his travels throughout the country, the people he meets along the way, which is often how some of his books are. They just encounters of people that he meets along the way. I think he, I think he really likes the human experience because I've heard that about travel books and, and you found that. And in this one, lots of, lots of names. And sometimes you're like, I don't even, why are we learning about this person? But he likes to sort of, that's how the information comes to him, which... Yeah, he talks about, I met this person 
name along in, in the a walk in the woods, he gives their trail name because they do have trail names when they're um, through hiking. Um, and he talks about different encounters that he had. But I think you're right. I think he must. That's how he sorts out. Yeah, catalogs, um, yeah, catalogs, catalogs different memories with encounters that he has. So one of the things that we have decided to do after we we picked our books, in this case, we kind of have a whole author thing going is to kind of look into the reviews um, and to take out what people liked, what people didn't like, <laughs> what people really didn't like, um, and to offer you some of those reviews in addition to our own experience with the book. Um, and then recommend, uh, if you did like this, or even if you didn't like this, some other books that might be on the same subject but give you a different experience. Mm -hmm. We're going to call this part the good, <laughs> the bad, and the ugly. Some of them are very ugly. <laughs> so ugly, in fact, that we didn't yeah. decide to talk about them here. But I don't know if it's the anonymity <laughs> of the internet, but some people really just hold back and let them, let them go. And I don't know about you when you were searching through them, but I kind of found that you either had people that tend to really, really love him and love his works, yeah. or you really didn't like his works. Very true. Um, <laughs> so many five-star reviews. Mm -hmm. And they, they kind of said the same stuff that we were touching on. Yeah. And if you are into any of those things, then you're probably, uh, you should definitely pick up Sebel Bryson because you'd probably give a five-star review too. Um, a lot of the, the ones for science were definitely not happy with the only anecdotal references. They wanted facts and they were unmerciful when there was a fact that was found to be not correct. Which I understand, you've got editors, you paid for this book, or you came all the way down to the library to check it out, like that makes sense to me. Um, I think some of <laughs> some of my favorites were, uh, one, one reader just wrote, I tried, I really tried. Uh, that was a one star oh, review. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, a, a good one uh, was, this book is two things. It's really interesting trivia about the human body, and it is terrifying, do not read while eating. So I guess that's like, you know, don't watch doctor shows while you're eating dinner. Don't read this book <laughs> while eating dinner. Um, and I would say the um, ugly but not terribly ugly was, this book would be better off titled Thoughts Bill Bryson Thought About One Day. I would recommend this book perhaps to my neighbor who never stops talking about nothing. So, <laughs> so a bunch of useless trivia questions yeah. you might be able to. They didn't um, like pull out there. that useless mm -hmm. trivia. <laughs> but maybe we could use some of this trivia for one of our trivia nights here. Ah, that's very true. The human body. Um, I had some similar ones as well that I that I had pulled. So the bad one stated, not for me. Boring as watching dust bunnies. That's that's pretty boring. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, another one in a sunburned country, which was um, interesting because I had read both of these as well. Nowhere near as good as his A Walk in the Woods. Ah, okay. And then another person, a raving review of In a Sunburned Country. Even if you have absolutely no intention of going anywhere near Australia, and you may not once you've read it, this <laughs> book is hilarious. Which is true, because in Australia, compared to our daily lives here and the wildlife encounters that we have, most everything Bill Brayson points out in Australia is trying to kill you. That, yes. Jellyfish, snakes, spiders. Big spiders. Everything. Yeah. Um, so, you're right, I didn't want to jump up and down and go <laughs> swim in Australia, but for those of you who might be interested in it, perfect. One guy had said about a walk in the woods, now I'm just afraid of bears and getting hypothermia. But another reader said, this book made me LOL multiple times. <laughs> so <laughs> the humor is going over very well, is what I'm picking up from these reviews. People, people like the humor, if nothing else. <laughs> and yeah, and it is, and it often has a lot of, he'll throw a lot of scientific stuff. He talks a lot about geology and um, ecology and things in A Walk in the Woods, but then oftentimes at the end of it, he throws in something that, as one reader says, will make you LOL. I like to LOL. <laughs> <laughs> so when we do this officially, and that's going to be the second Saturday of every month at 
9 a.m. on Facebook Live, you guys can ask us questions while all this is going on. Of course, this one's pre-recorded, so not today. <laughs> um, but we did some um, Google predictive text uh, to get some questions, so we can answer a couple of those and pull out a few, and uh, you'll find out more interesting facts about Bill Bryson. This one is for you. Mm -hmm. Has Bill Bryson actually hiked the whole Appalachian Trail? Spoiler alert, maybe you should cover your ears if you <laughs> don't want to know this. Absolutely not. He trekked most of it, if you can call it trek, by car. <laughs> um, gave up part of the way, decided to sightsee some Civil War era sites, and after he gave up, decided to maybe try it again. They didn't make it more than 15 miles. Okay. Then they decided that hiking wasn't for them. They only hiked about 800 miles. Okay. The entire trip. Less than half. So, if you are interested in a book that is about fully going out there and hiking the entire thing, yes. perhaps this book not that <laughs> might not be for you. But after this, we'll go over some books that you uh, might appreciate. Recommendations. <laughs> okay. Um, where is Bill Bryson right now? Like, like right now? Right next to me. You don't, yeah, don't, don't be creepy. creepy. <laughs> yeah, that's too much. Hopefully enjoying his it's retirement. A little, yeah, this, this newfound retirement of his. Um, is Bill Bryson American? Hmm. Yes. He is. But he has dual citizenship right. in the UK. <laughs> both. He spent a lot of his life in both parts. He, yeah, well, yes. With his wife. He met his wife there. I like this one. Does Bill Bryson have a degree? So, um, Bill Bryson started going to school at Drake University in Iowa um, only for a couple of years. He was studying political science, of all things, um, and stopped to go travel and, and do all of his writing. But, as of last year, he has 11 honorary doctorates, and one of those is from Drake University. So. Interesting tidbit about yeah. Bill Bryson. Um, so next time, uh, you guys can let us know what you want to know, and we will do our best to answer those questions. Mm -hmm. uh, but for today, if you liked what you heard, or if you didn't, uh, we've got some book recommendations for you. Of course we do. We always have book libraries. Always. <laughs> book recommendations <laughs> for librarians. It's kind of what we do. <laughs> Would you like to start with some of yours? I can. Um, so, I kind of took the author route as well. So, if you are interested in, um, you like a lot of facts on a certain subject and you want it scientifically based, um, Mary Roach is fantastic and has a wicked sense of humor. So, this is one of our audiobooks. Um, this one is called Stiff, The Curious Lives of Human Cadavers. And I have read this one more than once. Um, it's really interesting, stuff you wouldn't think to ask, but also uh, just funny, which subject you wouldn't think is funny. But I know, cadavers? Humorous? Right. I was shocked, but also very pleasantly surprised. Hmm. Um, this one is sort of on the same theme, I guess. Um, Caitlin Dowdy has a book called uh, When Smoke Gets in Your Eyes, which is about working in a crematorium. And this one, which is a little bit more Bill Bryson-esque because it's like little tiny, little tiny stories and factoids. Will my cat eat my eyeballs? Um, this is a bunch of questions from tiny mortals about death, mm -hmm. and there are some very funny yet factual information in there. And then finally, um, Sam Keen, and this particular book, The Violinist's Thumb, is all about the mysteries of DNA, like why some people are born without fingerprints, and could there be a DNA-based reason why some people um, turn into crazy cat ladies when they get older? The answer is yes. Um, and he also has uh, one that's all about the periodic table called the disappearing spoon. Uh, so like different areas of science are his jam. Um, he is very factual deep dive. So if the anecdotal nature of Bill Bryson kind of bothered you, I highly recommend Sam Keen. Um, so yeah, I stuck to the science side of things. What do you got? Oh, I've got lots of fun things <laughs> right here. Um, so like we had 
said before, he did not complete the trail. But if you are thinking about through hiking um, and you want a somebody, a great story about um, somebody who actually does complete the trail and the, the triumphs that they go through, if you haven't read it already, Wild by Cheryl Strayed is a fantastic book about um, a female who is going through a lot of stuff. It talks about a lot of her history, why she decides to sit out on the trail, and then she hikes the gruesome Pacific Crest Trail whew, all the way up the West Coast. And so it's a phenomenal book. Highly, highly recommend. Um, very similar to this, um, a little less humorous, but also a great read if you're interested in through hiking. Relatable. Mm -hmm. I thought that one, like, I felt mm -hmm. that one. That Tugs on your heartstrings yeah. a little bit. Um, if you were interested in a lot of the scientific stuff that Bill Bryson talks about in some of his books, but want some of it in more layman's terms, um, but also from a, um, a scientist, Highly recommend Among the Islands, Adventures in the Pacific. I actually picked this up years ago when I was in the airport <laughs> um, on a layover and I couldn't put it down um, by Tim Flannery. Uh, he has discovered almost arguably more species than Charles Darwin, uh, but he also explains everything about the um, wildlife. The He's more of an anthropologist as well, so the communities that he's encountering, but in layman's terms. So it's very an easy read, I guess, for any ability. Highly recommend. If you are interested um, in the federal land aspect about national forests, national parks, um, Alfred Runty has this great book about the American experience, um, national parks, and it talks more about why there are federal land regulations that we have, which Bill Bryson knocks one or two or ten times <laughs> in his book about why he didn't like how many um, how we had to walk a certain distance in Shenandoah National Park to get to the very next um, shelter and how he couldn't just camp anywhere and how he had to get permits and oh my goodness. There are reasons. But there are reasons place. and if you are interested in that, um, highly suggest this. It's very dense, it's a lot of information, but it's a great read. And last, like Bill Bryson and his friend Stephen Katz did, they just decided to pick up everything and just go on a hike. Maybe you're not thinking about hiking, but maybe you're at a point in your life where you're like, I just want to pick up everything and move. I want more solitude, which they did want solitude. <laughs> One Man's Wilderness and Alaskan Odyssey, um, which is by Dick Prinicky. It follows Dick Prinicky's life, who was in the lower 48 until he was probably in his mid-50s, decides to pick up, move to Alaska, and just rediscover his life and his self, and he builds a cabin, he definitely finds solitude. <laughs> I don't think he sees a single soul except the yeah. pilot that drops goods off to him every, once a month or so. Yeah. But um, if you want more of the lighthearted but inspirational true story, I highly suggest this book. Well, that's a, I think we fit a lot in. I feel, I feel good about that. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed it as well. Um, and again, if you did, hopefully you will come see us um, the second Saturday morning in April. Uh, we have picked a couple of books again, like we're kind of doing the authors and books. <laughs> started with one book, but then also turned into the author. It yes. seems like we're starting a trend here. So we started with Four Winds mm -hmm. uh, by Kristen Hanna, and then uh, we're both kind of trailing off into some of her other books as well. Um, so if that sounds interesting, if you've read it or if you're thinking about reading it, come now's join a us. good time <laughs> to pick it up and then join us. Um, ask any questions. Mm -hmm. Again, it will be live on Facebook the second Saturday at 9 a.m. Yes. Um, you can sit down, have a cup of coffee at home Maybe on your weekend, you ask like. us some questions. Um, we will gladly answer them if we can and hopefully dive deeper into Kristen yeah. Hannah and her works. All right. Hopefully we'll see you there, guys. Bye. Bye.